Okay, so, so we already did our measurement to the lead knuckle. The back of the hand, um, it's, you know, it's like a square shape. Notice the angles. Remember that the radius comes down a little bit further than the ulna. So you have that angle. So the back of the wrist, the back of the hand is kind of like that. You know, this is angling down. This angles down a little more, I would say. And then on the inside, you get the, uh, the triangle for the thumb. Okay. So remember, I said the thumb has its own little plane. You know, you can think about it. It drops down. Posable thumbs. Now here's the cool thing about the front plane of this is it leads you right into that thumb plane. See that? You can look on your uh, Vanderpool. See the light plane goes right into the into the thumb plane. Okay, and then with the fingers, you don't have to think about the individual fingers so much. Like remember the toes? We didn't really stress about each toe. But we thought of the rows of the toes. Rows of the toes. The rows of the phalanges. The back of the palm will tend to arc a little bit, right? If you look at your hand, kind of like a baseball mitt. So this, this can break into two planes. And then you have the, the phalanges. So that's all your finger bones. So just like the toes, you have three rows of fingers. So what happens is they start to arc under, right? I mean, you can hold them like this, but it gets tired, right? They naturally close under. So here's the first row. And as it goes under, it's going into a half tint, right? It's getting a little darker. So that's this row. The second row will go under even more. So you're just thinking bands of color, or bands of tone. And then the final little little row is just where your nails are, pretty much. So that'll just continue. Might be hard to sculpt. But that'll be going under into the dark. So if you're painting a portrait, you gotta do the hand real quick. You, know, you can make, make a value or a color for this part, a separate value for this as it turns under. And then under here, it might even be in the shadow. Come over to the thumb. Remember, fingers have three bones, the thumb has two. So you have this first one's real knobby with the big, big condyles on it. And the second piece is like a little tapering, uh, I don't know what you call it. It's a tapering. Whoa. 
Play is too soft. That thumb's a little long. I'm not going to change it. I can't get in there. There's a little step down in the thumb. Like here's the the knobby part and that steps down. So you even have wedging on the thumb. Okay, so once you have the rose there, then you can come in with your dark paint and you know maybe you want to pull out the pinky or the pointer finger, right? So you can you can negatively cut it out. Like that. Um, this, you know, these these kind of separate, right? These fingers kind of hang out together. You ever notice that? Like, look at Sergeant's women's hands. They're always like this. You know. So, so these, the middle finger and the ring finger, tend to group together like that. See? And the pinky always does its own thing. You know, it's it's little and it kind of hooks a little more. Yeah, mine kind of bend. Oh. And just keep breaking it down. You can think of this as a as like a step down to the hand. So like here you get you get more wedging, you get a transition of the wrist bones. In other words, this part is a little higher up than this part. So, why don't you take 15 minutes and uh, attempt the hand. And if you can try to put in, try to put in that um, Antonius, the little triangle back there. And definitely get this little triangular depression between them. Brachialis longus and flexor, flexor group. Flexors are kind of hard to get to because they're on the inside.